Hello, Isaac Segunro here. Welcome to this, I guess, part two of the videos, series of videos we've been I've been showing. Um, in this video, I am going to be showing you how to add a workflow to what we just created. So, if you remember, in our last couple of videos, we created this conference request form. Um, it just has these few fields. It has a director approval field. It also has a manager approval field. If you saw my last video, the reason I'm not seeing the manager approval is because um, I'm not a manager. I am a director, uh, and it's a in the in the list. There's a access control list that we use, but for a regular user, when they come to this form, they won't see this director approval because they're not a director or a manager. Um, so ignore this last field here. So what's going to happen is, let me bring up my workflow. So if you remember, I created this um, process flow here. The user comes in. If they fill out the form, they fill out the registration. The manager gets an email notification. They review the request. If they reject the request, the user gets a rejection notification from the manager. If it gets approved, it goes to the next level for the director. And if the director approves, um, the user gets a notification. And if it gets rejected, the user gets a rejection notification as well. But we're going to be working on just the first part of the user receives a request confirmation. And then this part here where the manager gets an uh, email confirmation permission. So let's go through and, and um, work on that. So I'm going to go to my Power Automate. So here's our power automate and what we're going to do is we're going to well we want to start from blank so if you click on this create in the navigation column you have these different choices from starting from blank and the one that we want is this automated cloud flow triggered by a designated event so click on that and then we're going to call this um conference request and then we're going to select when an item is created now usually a lot of people use when item is created or modified SharePoint but what I personally like to do and everybody's different I like to create do this and then for modifications I always use I would use uh, modified I would use this when an item is when an item or file is modified, that's what I use for um, for this part here, modified by. So I have two workflows, created and then modified. So, um, so we're going to go with this one. When an item is created, and then we're going to click create. And then what we need to do now is we need to tell it where our list is you know what site is it on so I'm gonna come through here and I am going to let's see which one is it right here so there it is Isaac unique and then I want to choose the list which is conference request conference request and that's pretty much it so now the next step if you click on next step you get all of these different things that you can do an action or trigger what I want to do is I want to just create a variable. So I'm going to say variable. Um, let's say initialize variable. Okay. And I'm going to call this manager, manager email. It's going to be a string. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the manager's email in here. So it's going to be me. So I'm just going to add my email. So there's my manager's email. And I'm just going to rename this. Manager email. All right. So now that i have this manager email and it's initialized to an actual email well all i need to do now 
is if I need to use it, I just need a reference in, in other areas of my workflow. So what I want to do now, the next step is now that I have this manager email, I need to send a notification to the manager and also back to the user just to let the user know that, hey, thanks, we received your notification. I mean, we received your request into the manager saying that, hey, there's a request waiting for you. So we're going to come in here and I want to say email. And I want to say send an email. And now I can come in here, I can say dynamic, and there is my manager email variable. So variable. Now you can also, if you had like a SharePoint group, there is a way to grab all the users in that group. You have to use the HTTP send request, but we're not gonna go over that. Maybe in another video we'll do that. But for now, I just wanna keep this really simple. So here's this. Um, so now that we do that, we're gonna let me put in a subject here. I'm gonna say this is this is gonna be to the um, to the manager. So I'm gonna say so conference request review. And I'm gonna say please. review and then I'm going to have a link to the item so if I scroll down here let me scroll down if you look for link to item see link that can be used to get the file or list item so let's click on that now there's something called deep linking we can also do deep linking to, to link to the actual uh, PowerPoint file we're gonna do that in another video we're gonna after we do all this we're gonna go back and say okay how can we improve this and then we're gonna talk about deep linking so you click on that so now that's to the manager so email to the manager so I can even rename this and say email to manager now the next thing is we want to send another email and this time the email goes to the user so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna say dynamic and we're gonna come by created by so this created by email captures the user that created that created the um, request so we have that and then we can say in our subject um, conference request received and then we can say we can come down here we can grab their first name and the last name from the form first name and their last name and then we can say your request has been received and sent to your manager for review. You will be notified notified upon completion. So that's to the actual user. So we can say here email sent to requester okay and then one last thing that we need to do because we also need to keep track where in the process this is and if you remember in our first video we had some fields um, we had a a request status field, an approver status value field, manager approval value field. So we also need to up update these fields because if we don't, how are we gonna know where in the process this is? So let's come in here, next step. And when we're gonna say update, update. And we want to update an item, update item in SharePoint. 
I'm going to go to the same list. And then we're going to say conference request ID. So it has it ready for us so we can know which ID exactly we need to manipulate. And then if we come down here, so now we just need to fill these things out with the information that was provided by the user. So conference name, because if we don't, what is going to happen is when this workflow runs, it's just going to replace whatever values are in our list and make it blank. So we'll do this. this phone okay so I filled all the forms now request status value so it's basically at this point it's going to be in progress and then the approval status is going to be awaiting manager approval so approval so we just need to make sure we do that um, and that's pretty much it so as we go through as we create the other workflow the modifier workflow and as it's going through the process we're going to update these different fields um and probably when it comes to completion changes to you know complete it um and the, you know of course the manager will do reject or approve so but that's that's pretty much it so let me you can save the workflow And once you're saved, that's good. So now let's go and test this out. So let's come in here, fill this out. Let me say John, John, Doe, J Doe, at uh, okay. Um, so remember, I'm a regular user. The regular user won't see this last portion here um, because they're not a director. So this is all they need to fill out. So this is all that they would need to fill out. Um, so now let's click save. Okay. Now let's go to our workflow. Let's see if it's run. So I'm going to click back here. And what I'm going to do now is let me refresh the page. Let me give it a second here. Okay, so refresh. So there it is, it finally started. So here it is, and it, it was a success, it succeeded. Uh, I can click in here as well to kind of see all the different parts of the workflow that work. Now, if you had like some type of error, this will also show you where there was a breakdown in the error and you would get some hints to the error as to what it was so that you can go and fix it. So let me open up my email. See, as you can see, check marks. These were all good. This took a second. So everything updated. We're good there. So now let me go and open up the email real quick. So let me open up my email. So if I come here, I'll look. So there it is, conference request received. So here it is, your request has been received and sent to manager for review. And then here it is, please review. Um, and I know mm. why that is, I should have put that in a link. I should have made that a link. So let me paste that in here. And there is our workflow. It looks like the conference name is missing, so I must have did something wrong. Um, let me go back really quick. 
conference name, edit the workflow. So maybe when I initially, I didn't, oh, you know what? I didn't put a conference name when I initially filled out the form. Um, but yeah, it, as you can see, it works. I know why I have this other, I know I, I see two, and I think it's because I had another workflow. I had another one that I had practiced on it, and I didn't turn that one off. So that's why you see a double. Um, but anyway, that's how this works. Come back to the next video so you can see the modification part of it um, and how it goes to the next director and the approval process. Thank you for watching. Bye.